So uh, first section we're going to look at, 5.1. Uh, we're going to split that into two days. Uh, we really could do it in one day, but um, I, think, I think we'll split it into two unless, unless we feel like we can wrap it up because there's 5.1 part two. There's hardly anything in it. So but we'll just see how it works. That we just end early and then just to push through our so up until now, the kind of graphing we've always done has been on what we call an xy coordinate grid. Okay. Xy coordinate, basically the first number defines left and right movement. The second number is up and down. Well, besides graphing using an xy coordinate system, there's another coordinate system called polar. Okay. And it's not based on xy coordinates at all. Okay, it uses a different kind of coordinate. It still has two numbers in them, but they're not an X and a Y. And it uses a different kind of graph paper. Right? It doesn't use like a, like boxes. Okay, it's different. Yeah. Can you scroll up so you get that titles? Yep. So polar coordinates. So we don't really get into much more than coordinates, but when you start getting into polar graphing, you can draw all kinds of things in polar that you normally can't do with y equals, right? Like circles, very hard to do on this. You can try to do a circle, um, and it kind of looks like... So let's say I want to draw a circle with a radius of 3. I can kind of fake what a circle would look like, but remember, this can only draw functions. And circles aren't functions because they don't pass the vertical line test. So when I do this, kind of get like the top half, and then I did the bottom half separate. But that's as good as I can do. Okay. Now, if we use a polar system, okay, instead of graphing it as a function, do polar, I can graph a circle, no problem. Very simple. And I don't know if you saw the amount of stuff I typed, it was a lot less stuff to get a picture of a circle, single number. So polar is really, really good to draw circles. What did you press? Uh, I'm in polar graphing. Oh, okay. So we don't, we don't really get into too much with, with graphing. We focus more on just coordinates. Okay. Oh. But this is what like the next step would be to do these kind of graphs. Okay. So it's on a circular grid. Um, we could also do graphs like this. Um, right, so we get more of a spiral. We can control, you know, how much of the spiral we want to see. Another graph that we couldn't do easily in y equals. Um, we could do um, three plus three cosine theta. That's three. Uh, three. And a plus in there. Okay. Let's see if you can tell what this kind of looks like. Is it a heart? Yeah, it looks kind of like a heart. Not as pointy, but a little bit like a heart, kind of squished. Um, and that shape is called a cardioid. Oh because it looks kind of like a heart. Um, so that's a, another another sheet we can draw that you can't really draw in um, as a function. How yeah. did you change the y equals to those? Uh... Oh, we go to mode. It's in polar. Again, not, we're not really going to focus on it too, too much. Um, I'll show you one other thing you can do. Let's do sine 2 theta. Oh, you can't see that. Let me make it here. Um, let's do... Seven. 5 sine 2 theta. So it's for butterfly. Yeah, so we get, it's, um, they call those petals. So it's like that's a four petaled. Someone made a flower on my Oh, they made a flower? Yeah. yeah, you can you can control the number of petals. How did you put the theta? Oh, I see, never mind. What? No. So we get all kinds of different graphs uh, in polar. So it's, a, it's an interesting coordinate system, you know, but we don't, we don't do more than like a day on it. Maybe maybe day and a half, all right. But that's polar. So the calculator does all all kinds of stuff with polar. All right. So let's look at a polar grid. So this is what polar graph paper looks like. Okay, it doesn't use this kind of graph paper. This is a rectangular coordinate system, x and y. That's polar. Um, in polar. Um, there's only one axis. There really isn't two. There's just a horizontal axis, and that's called the polar axis. 
everything is measured off of that. There's nothing that's measured off of a vertical axis in polar. Um, there's a, a pole. It's really just the origin. I've heard it called both. And when we write a coordinate in polar, it's still going to have two numbers. But these are going to be the two numbers. They're not x and y. Okay, R has something to do with a, a circle. Radius. It's a radius. So R is a distance from the pole or from the origin, how far out you go. And what do you think theta represents? The angle uh, off of the zero degree. Yeah, it's an angle. Yep. So theta is an angle. So very different than x and y. We specify a coordinate using an angle. And in this case, the angle is an amount of rotation. Okay, it's an amount of rotation. So when you, um, when you have an angle, there's two directions you can rotate on the circle. We don't describe rotation as up, down, left, and right. That's a rectangular system. What are the two directions you can rotate on these circles? Clockwise and counterclockwise. Right. Clockwise and counterclockwise. So we're going to go through what do you do if r is positive or negative? How do you graph that? And then what do you do if the angle is positive or negative? Do you go clockwise or counterclockwise? So we'll look at that right now. So the goal in a minute is for me to be able to give you a point just like that. And you know how to graph that point on that system. So first, just looking at that point, um, what's the radius? Three. So it's going to be on a circle that's three units in radius. And then there's an amount of rotation. Okay, so the point is going to go out three from the origin, and it's going to rotate 120 degrees. Well, let's see which, which way. So the first thing is we're going to move out the number of rings indicated by R. For this part of the coordinate, it's kind of like x. Okay. If r is positive, you're going to start at the origin or the pole, and you're going to go to the right. How far to the right? Well, whatever r is. If r is 3, you go 3 to the right. If r is 2.5, go 2.5 to the right. If r is negative, you're going to go from the pole to the left. Okay, so let's look at those steps as we um, kind of look at this one. So in this case, is R positive or negative? It's positive. So if R is greater than 0, you're going to start at the pole, and you're going to move to the right. How many to the right are we going to go? Three. Three. <clears throat> okay. So we're going to start here. We're going to go one, two, three. I'll just put a temporary mark there. I'm going to erase that. But that's where we're going to start our rotation from. How much do you think we're going to rotate? We're going to rotate 120 degrees. But well, we have to figure out which direction. Clockwise or counterclockwise? Counterclockwise. In this case, because the angle is greater than zero, we are going to go counterclockwise. So you do step one first. Will be either left or right, as indicated by R. And then you're going to rotate. Remember, counterclockwise goes this way. It's counterclockwise. Clockwise is the other way. That's clockwise. Positive angle, counterclockwise. Negative angle, clockwise. That's the same kind of movement we did on the unit circle when we had angles. Now, when you have polar graph paper, just like regular graph paper, it might be bigger, smaller. In this case, I have six, six rings. So I can go out up to six. And how much is each one of these lines? Kind of like these radial lines coming from the origin. Are they 15 degrees? How much? Are they 15 degrees? They're each 15, yep. So this is 15, 30, 
all the red ones are 45s, and then this is 60, 75. You can break it up into more, you can break it up into less. Okay, it depends on the graph paper. Okay, and that breaks it into 15s. Okay, so we're going to go out three. And I'm going to rotate counterclockwise 120. So if I go a quarter, that's 90. How much past 90 do I have to go? To 120. To 120. So how many more lines is that? Oh, um, hmm. Two. Two. Another 15 and 15 is another 30 past 90. And that gives me a total of 120. So that's how you graph the point. 3, 120. So you'll have some like that on edge elastic. You'll just, there'll be a grid like that, and you'll click, and you'll put the point. Um, it's, you know, it's got to be pretty close to that. You know, if you have the point like way down here or something, that's, that's not right. Okay. But you're going to have a grid, so you'll, you'll be able to click, and I'm usually going to give you a point that ha it's on a nice, like it's, it's on a nice line. Are we ever going to have numbers that aren't in the 15s? Um, I think most of the ones like on the tester, they land right on one of the lines. Okay. Yeah. I mean, you could have one in the homework, but um, I think on the test, they land on the lines. Right. So any question on that one? Positive radius, positive angle. Okay. Let's look at one. This is still positive, positive. Um, but this time, what's different about the angle? Radians. Yeah, it's in radians. So if you want to change the degrees, you can if it's easier. Um, so we, we could do that. What's, uh, what's pi over 4 if we change that to degrees? How much? No, it's, can we say 270? Uh, 270 nope, is 3 pi over 2. Ah. Uh, 90 uh, is pi over 2. 4 pi. I mean, 45. 45, yes. Yeah, take a do. I thought about the radians. I'm like, well, 1 pi is 180. That means half of that and half of that. Yeah, yeah, it's a quarter of pi. Yep. Uh, it's a quarter of 180. I ain't that smart. Well, now you know. I know, I know. And now you are. Now you are. That's one of uh, <laughs> So, start with your radius. Um, how many units are we going to move right. out? Five units, and then which way? Clock, counterclockwise, 45 degrees. Uh, not, not yet. Oh, oh, to the right. To the right. So five to the right. Back down the line. Oh, no, it's down. And then from there, we're going to go 45 degrees. Counterclockwise. Counterclockwise. Yeah. So that's three lines. 15, 30, 45. Any question on that one? Okay, so still again positive, positive. Let's try a uh, positive radius, negative angle. Okay, um, how about um, Christian? What's R in this case? Five. Five? And we're going to start out by going five to the right. Yep, five to the right. So one, two, three, four, five. Start. Start right there. So that's kind of that's your zero point. Wherever you move out, that's where you start from. Whether you go left or right. Now, how much are we going to rotate? Negative two hundred ten degrees. Um. Well, just how much are we rotating now? Yeah. Thirty. Um. Thirty. 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 More than thirty. Like a little more than ninety. Definitely. Well, exactly. How much are we going to rotate? Oh. Mm. I don't want to know a direction. 120. 170 degrees. How much? 210. We are rotating 210 degrees. Okay. That's the amount of rotation. Now, the negative tells us which way. Which way are we rotating? Clockwise. We're going clockwise. So that's clockwise 210 degrees. Well, if we go halfway, how much is that? 180. That's 180. And then how much past 180 to get to 210? 30. 30. So, so 15 far. and 15. 
Okay, so right there. Right, so that's your that's your final answer. Five negative two ten. Okay, any question on that? One? Okay, so that's a positive and a negative. Let's try a negative and a positive. So negative three pi over two. So what? So yeah, this time you're gonna go left how many? Three. Left three. So let's, let's actually draw how we do that. So we're gonna go left three. And then we're gonna go to 90 degrees. Well, how, how much are we rotating? 90. 90, 90 degrees. And then which way? Counter. Uh, yeah, we're going counterclockwise. So where does that put me? Where 270 would be. Yeah, that puts me down here. That's how you get to that point. Left three, and then rotate counterclockwise 90. Now, what's, uh, what's another way we could get to that point besides going left three and then rotating clock, uh, counterclockwise 90? Do you still want to keep the negative three? Um, you could, or you could not. There's different ways you could do it. Either way. All right, so you would go three to the right. Okay. And then that would be 270. So we could go this. three to the right, and we could go yeah. 270, which is three pi over two. So that's three to the right, one, two, three, and then rotate 270. So there's another way to get to the point. All right, how about another way? Uh, positive three and negative nine. So what, and that would be negative? Negative uh, pi over two. Pi over two, yep. So you go right three. And then go 90. You okay. could do one more. Negative 3 and then negative 3 pi over 2. So negative 3, negative 3 pi over 2. Um, so let's see. start at negative 3. Let's start right there. And then go clockwise 270. So how many different ways did we just come up with to get to that point? Three. Four. 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 Including the one that oh, was given. Okay. Yeah. So the black, the red, yeah, the green, right. and the blue. So you can basically go left clockwise or counterclockwise, or you can go right clockwise or counterclockwise. So there's four different ways to get to that point. So going left and then going around like three or four times and then stopping, that, that doesn't count as an additional way. If you count that, then there's an infinite number of ways. Okay. But we just count those four basic ways. Left clockwise, left counter, right clockwise, right counterclockwise. Yep. Uh, yeah. Now, how about uh, in rectangular? Let's say I have this point right here. How many ways can I write the coordinate for that point? One way. One way. What is the coordinate? It would be 2, 1. 2, 1. That is the only way to write that coordinate. Okay, so in rectangular, there is only one way to write a location. In polar, there can be up to 4. But not always 4. But look at this one. Um, let's put a point right here. What's one way you could get to that point? 3, 0. 3, 0. What's another way? Negative 3 pi. Negative 3, yes. It's, when you said 0, did you mean degrees or radians? I did degrees. You did degrees? OK, so I'll just do 180, which is pi. So negative 3, and then 180 degrees uh, this way. So that's that one. Mm -hmm. And what's another one? Negative 3 negative 180. So that's this way. 
And that's it. There isn't a fourth way to get there. That's because of this first one. There was no rotation to get to this point when you went to the right. So there's only three ways. So three ways to get to any point that's on the polar axis, four ways to get to a point not on the polar axis. Hmm. Any question? Yeah. So we don't use 316? Uh, 360 would be the same as bro. That would just be an extra revolution. We don't we don't count like you could put 720, you could put 1080, that's just going around more times. Okay. Um, we, I guess we can do this one. We kind of just did one like this. Um, negative 2, negative 180. Two to, the left. 2 to the left. And then 180 clockwise. And then 180 clockwise put you right there. Whenever you go halfway around, it really wouldn't matter which way you go. You still get to the same point. But you should know it's clockwise. All right, so that pretty much covers all the cases. That's a negative, negative. That was a negative, positive, positive, negative, and positive, positive. Well, I guess the only thing we haven't talked about is a zero. How do you think this one's going to look? Zero, 300. It's stay in the middle. All right, so we don't go left or right at all because the radius is zero. But what's the amount of rotation? 300 degrees. 300 degrees. So if we start there, it's like 90, 180, 270, plus another 30. You got to put it right like that. That's what I'm looking for. And what I can tell, like on paper, when we do it, I look for what's called the spin factor. So I look if you put your pencil down, and did you rotate it in place? So I use a magnifying glass, and I can see the grooves. Like, like, you know, your pen or pencil, you know what I mean? Mm. I can see. Can we just like, make an arrow pointing the way it's supposed to No, no, I, gotta, I take out the magnifying glass. <laughs> and I look for the, for the spin. Oh. I look for the spin. I call it the spin factor. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, not too much, not too little. Just right. I'm just kidding. I don't do that. So, <laughs> zero comma anything. It just stays right at the origin. It doesn't matter what this angle is. How about if we switch it? If we put the zero in the second spot, is that going to be at the origin? No, it's just going to stay at the one spot. Yeah, it's just going to go one to the right. It's always yeah. going to be on that red horizontal. Mm -hmm. All right, so any, any question on that? So I showed you uh, in polar like some different graphs you can do. Circle, uh, extremely simple, like if I draw that. Very simple to draw a circle. What do you think is pretty complicated to draw in polar? Circles are very simple. Yeah? Straight line. Yeah. Lines are not easy to do in polar. The best system if you want to draw a line is just function. y equals mx plus b. That's the easiest way to draw a line. You can draw a line in polar. But to draw basic lines in polar, you need to use sine and cosine. It, it's, it, so there has to be an understanding of trigonometry just to draw a line. That's why we don't normally teach how to draw lines in polar as the first way you learn how to draw a line. We do y equals mx plus b because it's much easier and you don't need any trig on it. So each system is good for, for different, different things. All right, so I'm going to give you guys a second to try this one. Um, I want to practice writing this point um, three different ways. Right? And we already did this with one point. We did it all four. Um, but let's try writing it with a positive radius um, and let's say an angle between negative 360 and zero. What I'm doing here is I'm just limiting you, so I'm, you can't give me an angle that's like negative 5,000 something. You can't go around that many times. So a positive radius and a negative angle, a negative radius and a positive angle. All right, so let me just write down the ones we got. 
I gave you the positive positive. This is the positive negative. The next one is negative positive. What's the one I'm missing? Uh, negative, negative. Anyone want the negative negative? So let's do that one. So negative radius, negative angle. Okay, now we got them all. So see if you can figure out the three different ways to write that point. And the easiest way might be to try to sketch it. And then you can just you know, like use your pencil and say, OK, I would go around this way or this way. Then you can see it. Mm. All right, but this point is going to start uh, right there. That's 3 comma pi over 6. Because pi, actually, no, it's right here. I'm sorry. Because pi over 6 is how much? It's 30. Yeah, so I went right three and then rotated two sections. All right, see if you can get that other, the other three ways. And then we'll, um, let's take a look at it. All right, so let's see if we can figure out um, the three different ways to write this coordinate based on the one they gave us. Um, so let's start with the first one. They want the radius positive. So what number would have to be the radius? Three. Yeah, you don't have any choice. I mean, you've got three or negative three. Those are only two numbers. And then they want the angle to be negative. So that means they want you to go this way, three. And they want you to rotate which way to get to it? Clockwise. Yep, they want you to go clockwise. So basically around like that. So it's negative. And how much would you have to rotate? 330? Yep, that would be a negative 330. Would that also be negative uh, 11 pi or 6? Uh, yeah, we could write that in radians as well. Yep. Yep. Okay, so we got that one. Okay, second one. Uh, this time they want the radius to be less than 0. What's the only number that you could use less than 0 to make this work? Three. It's got to be negative 3. Right, so let's write that one down. Okay, so now we're going three to the left, and they want us to rotate which way for this one? Counterclockwise. Counter Counterclockwise. That is 210 degrees. Yep. So it's halfway around, which is 9, uh, 180 <coughs> plus 30 more. So that's 210. Now the last one, we're starting at the same spot, but now we're going to rotate 150 degrees. Yep, that's 30 degrees shy of going all the way around, so that's uh, negative 150. <coughs> I realized afterwards. You got it? Perfect. Yeah, I had redid my math and calculation from wrong. Oh, right. So any question <laughs> on, uh, on what we got there? Okay. All right, so the last thing we'll look at is um, how we can convert a point from polar to rectangular. Right, so let's see what, what that looks like. From polar to rectangular. So in polar, what do they give you when you're going to write a coordinate in polar? Radians and theta. Do they give you a radius, radius. and an angle? Okay, so those are the two things in polar. What about um, when you're graphing on a rectangular grid? X and Y. They give you an X and a Y. Yep. So our goal is to convert a radius, which we will be given. <coughs> and an angle, which an angle is always the amount of rotation with the polar axis. We have to convert that into an x and a y. Okay, um, so what do you think we could do in that diagram to start thinking about an x and a y instead of an r and a theta? Yep. You could divide the 
angle in radians by the radius of the line in order to get the, uh, the y and the x, like the rise and the run. So are you, um, can you uh, just say that one more time? Yeah, so if you're corresponding like theta with y, you convert the angle in theta to radians and then divide that by the radius of your line to have that correspond with your x to get the rise of the run. Of the line. So how, how could we, view, oh, okay, I see what you're saying. How, so how could we visualize where the x and the y would be in that picture? Like if I wanted to add something to that picture to make the x and the y like. You gotta tick marks. Okay, what do you mean? <laughs> uh, no, honestly, I really don't know. Just mark the horizontal axis as x and the more vertical axis as y. Okay, and is, so is x gonna be like, because we're trying to find the number for this coordinate. Right. So what would we have to do so we could see where, how much of like the x-axis, like how far over we go? Make tick marks of one. Okay, so you could, you could put in a bunch of tick marks. Yeah. All right, now, now what would you do? Add tick marks to the y. Okay, so you, you can put in tick marks, but we still, we've got to do something to be able to, to visualize where the X and the Y are in the picture. Hmm, good label the line. Okay, so we, we can label them, but we need to draw something first to be able to see them. Would you need to draw a grid? No. Um, so we've got the tick mark, so that's that's okay. We don't really need a we don't need a grid. We're not looking for finding like an exact number for x and y right now. We're just looking at kind of figuring out where it would be in the picture. Do we just add in a circle? So that's what we have right now. Basically, that point is on a circle like that. And what we want to do is, instead of visualizing how far out and then rotating, we want to visualize how far right and then how far up. You could add a line coming down to the x-axis and make a triangle. So add a line yep. coming down to the x-axis. No, like straight down. Oh. Straight down. Oh, OK. <laughs> oh, yeah. Make a triangle. Like that. Yep. OK. Boom. There you go. X, Y. So now where's, where is x? X is on the bottom, going across horizontally. So there's... Yep, and then you have X. Y going upwards to the sky. And then we got Y going up. Now you can do hypotenuse. I mean, uh, Pythagorean theorem to find the hypotenuse. Well, we know the hypotenuse. Oh, yeah. We, we know this, and we know this. So we're going to know what R is already. Mm. But we got to figure out the base and the height of that triangle. The base is the X. And the height is the y. Was I right? Uh, well, Pythagorean theorem. No. Pythagorean theorem. No. Triangle. Triangle. Yes. Triangle. So yeah, you are right with the triangle. Yes. Yeah. Yep. That's exactly what we want to do. And now you're going to know this, and you're going to know. Well, I'll just circle that. We're going to know two out of the three angles. So yeah, we know that. And we know that one's a ninety. And we know that. And let's say we want to figure out that. <clears throat> Let's start with x. How could we find x? Like if you had a triangle like this. Side angle side. Oh, this is angle. five. Side <laughs> angle. This is twenty, and that's a ninety. Side angle angle. Okay, remember it's a right triangle though, so you don't need to think about law of sines or law of cosines. Oh. That would work, but we have a, a simpler way. We have the hypotenuse over uh, opposite opposite. I'll say opposite of hypotenuse and adjacent over. Okay, so which two sides do I have circled in the triangle here? You have your x and your r. And what position is x? X will be uh, adjacent. That's adjacent. Hypotenuse. And what's r? Your hypotenuse. Hypotenuse. And there is one trig function that has adjacent and hypotenuse in it. Hypotenuse over adjacent would be Tangent. your uh, cosine. 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 Yep. Great okay. okay. Um, lost. So lost. And can you say that again? What's cosine? It's 
what um, over what? It's your adjacent over your hypotenuse. It's your adjacent over your hypotenuse. So if you got x by itself there, what would be in that box? That would be uh, r uh, times cosine of your uh, theta angle. And you're going to know the r and you're going to know the theta because that's a polar coordinate. They'll give you those two things. You fill them in right there, and that's your x. All right. Now let's do the same thing again, but this time focus on what's circled in black. I want to look at the y and the r, not the x this time. Okay. What side is the y? Your opposite. No, that's the opposite. So what trig function would you use opposite and hypotenuse? Sine. Sine. Yeah. So sine of theta would equal, and it would be what over what? Opposite over hypotenuse. So opposite y over, over r would just be r cosine of theta equals y. So what would y equal? r sine of theta r equals y. And those are the two formulas that convert a radius and an angle into an x and into a y. R sine theta and R cosine theta. Now, we are going to use Pythagorean theorem, but that's going to be, let me do it the other way. And what trig function haven't we used here? That's one of the three main ones. Tangent. Tangent. That's also going to be when we do it the other way. So that'll be rectangular polar. Okay, I think I wrote those same things down again. Right here. Yeah, it's the same thing. So converting from polar to rectangular. So it just says if you have a point with an r and a theta, use these two formulas to convert from polar to rectangular. And I will try, um, try a couple of things. Okay, so now while people are writing that down, uh, we're going to deal with angles that are multiples of 30 and 45 uh, quite a bit. Okay, we'll, we'll use those a lot. So when we did the unit circle, okay, we way back at the second week of trade, there were two values that came up quite a bit when we dealt with 30s and 60s, and then there was a value that came up a lot when we dealt with a 45. Does anybody remember what square root comes up a lot when you're dealing with a 45, 45, 90 triangle? 205. Square root of what? Square root of uh, 3. Um, square root of 3 comes up when you do the 30s and 60s. Oh, okay. Anybody square root of 4? Um, no, that square would be a nice answer. This yeah, is square, square root of 2. Over square two. root of 2 over 2, yeah. So square root of 2 over 2 is going to come up. And then square root of 3 over 2 is the other one that comes up a lot. So a lot of times when we convert to polar, or convert to rectangular from polar, they're going to ask us to write the answer exact, okay? if it's a 30 or a 45. If the angle is like 12 degrees, then we can't write it exact. But if it is a 30 or a 45, we can. So what we want to look out for is a number like 0 0.707 and 0 0.866. How do you know that off the top of your head? Uh, I've 
I've, uh, I've worked with those numbers once or twice. So 0 0.866 and 0 0.707. Those are two numbers that will come up quite a bit. So here's an example. Um, sine of 135, except I'll put it in degrees. Point seven zero seven. Okay, so for example, um, 135, that's an example where when you take the sine or cosine of it, you get that point seven zero seven. Um, here's an example, let's do like cosine of 210, point eight six six. Well, it's a negative, but this is really negative square root 3 divided by 2. So you both know if you actually type it in the correct way. See how that number and that number are the same? Oh my gosh. That's what we're looking for. So if we get a number like this, we need to change it so it looks like that. But that's only with 30s and 45s. Something random? I have no idea what that is, 0.743. We'll just call it 0.743. Let's try it again. Look at the angle first. Um, is that angle a multiple of a 30 or a 45? Is it one of those? Yes, yes it is. So then we're going to be able to write that answer exact. Okay. We're going to get one of these decimals that pop up somewhere. All right, so let's try it. Um, using the two formulas that we wrote down, Okay. what's the formula? For x, but I want to fill in my r and my theta. Yep, negative 4 cosine 120. Let's write y while we're just writing everything down. Okay, what's my formula for y? Negative 4 sine theta 120. So sine 120. Okay, now let's do both of them. Now, don't worry about the negative 4 yet. If you multiply by the negative 4 first, it's going to mess up you, you looking for these two numbers. You're going to see these numbers times 4, which you probably won't recognize. So we need the negative 4, but let's just hold off on it for now. So it's negative 4 times, and let's do cosine 120. Cosine 120. Okay, well... That is a decimal, but it's not a weird one that we have to recognize. We should know what that is. Um, what is negative 0.5 as a fraction? One half. Yeah, just neg negative one half. Okay, so we'll, we'll do that out. Um, what's negative 4 times negative one half? Positive 2. Positive 2. The way this usually works is when you have an angle that's a multiple of a 30, one answer comes out nice, the other answer is the one that we have to check that table for. Okay, so let's do the bottom. Negative 4 times the side of 120. Okay, is that a number we should recognize? Yes. What is point eight? It's approximate. What is 0.866 when you write it as an exact fraction? Right. So don't write 0.866. I want you to write square root 3 over 2. Right. And now we'll, we'll simplify that as much as we can. Um, what number goes into both 4 and 2? 2. 2. two. How many times does 2 go into 2? Once. And how many times does 2 go into 4? Twice. Twice. So it's negative 2 square roots of 3. That's the y value. And if you're not sure if you did it right, um, check it. Type the whole thing in. Negative 4 sine 120. You get that number. Now type in what you just got. Negative 2 square roots of 3. Yep. Same number. So you can easily check it. All right, let's write it down. So the coordinate is 2, comma, negative 2 square root of 3. 
or as a decimal, to negative 3.46. I'd say the only time the approximate one is good is if you want to graph it. Then you can see, okay, it's about negative 3.5. Any question on that one? Yeah? If you go back to where uh, you were showing the decimal and the square root 3 over 2. Uh, yeah. On to the page where you had written it down, it's uh, function. Oh, I get that other one in this room. Uh, that one here. Okay, so what I want to do now is I want to graph that that point they gave us. Just the original point, negative four, uh, negative four one twenty. Okay, what would you do first if you wanted to graph that? Go four to the left. four to the left. Okay, and then rotate how much? 120 counterclockwise. 120 counterclockwise. So that's 90. And then how many more? 30. 30. Right about there. Okay. Does everyone agree that that's, that's where it should be? <coughs> All right. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to change, I'm going to leave the point right where it is, but I'm going to change the background behind the point. And I'm going to change it to a rectangular grid where the spacing is exactly the same as those. And that's going to be my y-axis. And I want you to watch where the point ends up. Let's see if it ends up exactly two units to the right. And a little bit, about three and a half units down. Let's see. And if it does, then we know we did it correctly. I got to use the same size graph paper. So that's the small polar paper. So I have to use this. Um, is that small or is that large? Actually, I think that's the largest one. So I got to use the large rectangular paper. Let's see what happens. So does it look like that, that point is two units right? and about three and a half units down. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And you can see where I put those tick marks. Those were where the circles were. So I just changed the background behind the paper, behind the point. All right. Isn't that amazing? That's the coolest thing you're going to see today, I'm telling you. Right there. It's the height of your day. It goes downhill now. <laughs> <laughs> so there's the polar. You can even do it again. Watch. Boom. Oh, my God. Yeah. You can't really do that on your, on your homework, but you can do it on your homework <laughs> if you have some homework. So. All right, any question on that one? All right, let's try, um, I got one more that's a simple one, but let's do one more with the, uh, where that number comes up like that, with the square root. Let's try two, uh, 135. So two, 135. Okay, uh, what's going to be the formula for my x value? Three is cosine theta. All right, so in this case, it'll be two cosine one thirty-five. Perfect, two cosine one thirty-five. And what's the formula for my y value? Two sine two sine one thirty-five. Is 135 a multiple of a 30 or 45? Is it one of them? Yes. Yeah, it is. So we're going to find the number on that other page. Don't worry about the 2 yet. We'll do that after. Let's just do cosine 135. Cosine 135. Okay, we should recognize that number. Negative 0 0.707. Well, what's positive 0 0.707. What was the fraction that you two, uh, Square root 2 over 2. Square root 2 over 2. So then what's negative 0 0.707? Mm -hmm. Negative square root 2 over 2. So it's 
times negative square root 2 over 2. When you multiply those together, what cancels out? The 2s. Because you could think of it as like a fraction. You've got a 2 in the top, 2 in the bottom. So what, what are you left with? Negative square root of 2. Just negative square root of 2. Comma. Now let's do sine 135. Okay. Is that a number we should recognize? Yes. Yep. Positive 0 0.707. <clears throat> what is positive 0 0.707? Two. That's the square root of 2 over 2. And again, what um, what cancels? Two. 2 in the top, <coughs> 2 in the bottom. And what are you left with? Square root of 2. Square root of 2. All right. Let's see if we did that one right. So, get rid of my point. Um, so what's my, um, what's my radius on that one? Two. Two? And I'm going to rotate how much? 135 degrees counterclockwise. So 135 degrees, that means go one quadrant, and then halfway through the next. So when we rewrite that in um, rectangular, square root of two is about 1.4. So it should be almost one and a half units left, one and a half units up. But, Let's see. What do you think? Does that look like it's a little less than one and a half left and one and a half up? Yeah. Yep. Looks good. All right. Any question on it? So that's how you convert uh, polar to rectangle. All right. So the questions tonight, uh, it's all even. But it's um, 12 to 26 and 40 to 46. Even on my Are we both of Yes. So tomorrow we'll, um, we'll finish up 5.1 part 2, and then we'll Look at the next um, the next section, which is actually section A four. A stands for appendix. It's um, it's a section in the back of the book. So we'll we'll do that one tomorrow.